<laughs> now, are they actually singing or was it a... Yes. They did. They're they playing were. the instruments too. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow, they're very talented. And you know what's funny is people will look at Michael McKean. That's the guy from Better Call Saul. Yeah, no, they think right. he is. Well, he is. Oh, the brother, the brother, right? Yeah. I forgot that. Yeah, yeah. That, I don't like that character that he plays in there. Oh, it's great character, it's honey. Just, I just think he's an annoying person. I don't want. Oh, I wouldn't because want to know him. He has well, the. Uh, he's doing it well. Electricity. He's, well, he thinks that he's allergic to electricity, but I mean. he's clearly just mentally ill. I mean, I like him playing that character because yeah. he's a great actor. Right. And doing that, but of course. I don't why like do you that hate, character. Why do you hate Michael McKean though? Let's talk. Uh, let's get into it. <laughs> Are you afraid of electricity? Are you no. afraid of how much you no, hate I don't it like hits how, too close to home? I don't like, no, not at all. I don't like the paranoia, do, the whole the, thing. I don't want to be around out? that guy. Are these microphones yes, bothering you? My it. father was killed by a Walkman. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. So, thanks for bringing that up. I, I didn't bring course, anything up. Of course, Michael. Your guest did. My, <laughs> the great Johnny W. Yeah. Yeah. Are we rolling? We're good? Uh, sure. He's making adjustments. Yeah, I don't know what's... Adjustments. Sure. We're, we're fine. We can do All it right, this way. Slice of life, you know. It's always different. Just uh, no packaging here. I forgot to check <laughs> if I had anything in my teeth. <laughs> Come on, man. No pack. What's the bit we were we would do on with the, the sweet and low and the... Oh, the the storytellers, but it's pour, pour some sugar on me. Pour some sugar on me. You yeah. know, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're doing like the, yeah, like the English whatever, rocket talking about. Yeah, it's like... Oh, Def, Def, Leppard Def Leppard talking Leppard, about. Def Leppard talking about it, but the story is just like a ridiculous... Right. <laughs> Push, you know, like you see a girl, you know, yeah, or whatever. Like, well, I was in the hallway, passed out. I was like, you know, pour some sugar. Pour some sugar, right. Why not? I mean, you're going to do it, right? I mean, it's pretty much... <laughs> when do you guys do Next this? logical step, right? Pour some, some sugar. Not like... Right? Literally say, feel... Like, something about that. <laughs> Not splendid. It's not granulated. No, it's not like <laughs> you know, the raw sugar. It's too gra- It takes too long to dissolve, right? <laughs> you don't got time for that. <laughs> Going to time with the dissolving. Now, do you guys do this on stage or what is this? No, page? Johnny this and I, I would just, just uh, we we had a special <laughs> connection. I, I think we were best friends before we even met. You know what's funny? I was telling somebody the story of my kind of whatever. I guess you call it like my audition weekend out right, with you guys yeah. in it was like april of 2012 which is very wow. stressful it is it is and i've been doing comedy like such a i've been doing comedy like four years yeah and then it's like wow. you're you and you get an opportunity to go to the big leagues for this weekend and let's see how it goes yeah so then in front of these big crowds and like the first the first show i was like i was nervous because like on the bus and i was like tim i already knew like tim's gonna not want me to do any parodies and not going to do any we, I was doing like... I didn't thing. tell you that. No, no, no. Though. I thought, thought though. Oh, I mean, don't thinking. put that on me. No, no, no. <laughs> he said he thought. No, I thought. I was like, oh, this is how it is. Because I've done shows before when you're coming up in the clubs and stuff and you're like, if a guy plays guitar and he's the headliner, he's mm-hmm. like, you're not playing mm-hmm. guitar tonight. Mm. Because no. you're kind of stepping on his. So I was mm. like, well, if Tim's yeah. that guy, I'll just have to lay it down. Even though mm. I'm auditioning and I need to do my best stuff, right. Right, I'll just do it. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll sacrifice. And so... What's that beat? What's that clicking? Something what's going clicking? on? Do you want me to turn this down a little bit? In the headphones? Yeah. 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 Okay. Is what? it every time you're switching, it's going to do that click? No, I think Sounds it's... Sounds cool. Or is that the fire alarm of the... <laughs> yeah. I like Get it. out of the building. <laughs> I think it's one of the uh, apps I'm using. So. We, um, we uh, Heather and I, were doing a Hebrew class yeah. with this guy oh my for about a year. Uh-huh. And it, it was a Zoom class. And there's like, you know, 20, 30 people in From the Zoom class. From all over the world. And his name is Chaim. Okay. And uh, yeah, he had uh, his his fire alarm was chirping every. And he had. Appearance. Oh, and he didn't know he didn't hear it. I don't know. I if don't he know. Did. That's what happens. It went on every. Well, for it's months. when your batteries start to go dead yeah, in your, but he was, and they yeah. beep to tell you to replace the battery. Yes, yes. but you don't hear it because it happened with my house too. You'd have a visitor over, and they go, "When are you gonna?" And you go, "Oh, I no, he you knew because we were all telling him. And uh-huh. in fact, our friend was in the area, so he's like, "Hey, I'm in." Chicago area. Yeah, yeah. Can I come by your house? And she, he goes, well, no, because I rent and the guy has to do it. We're like, yeah, I was what? like, can I fly up there? Yeah, because it was so annoying. Battery? It was it was horrible. <laughs> okay, let Johnny finish this. No, so though. but when I got on the bus, I was like, I was kind of like walking on eggshells. Like, is this gonna be? And the remember the first thing you said, you go, hey man, it's cool to see you. You go, you got some things you do that I think we could do together. And I was oh, like, sweet. oh, yeah. this is a different cat. Like, I knew right away. I was like, okay. Yeah. So then cool. we started doing the, the one-liner thing together. 
The tweet yes. on stage, the tweet song. How did that start? Well, I was doing I, a thing called the joke medley. I sent it to Todd, your brother, who, who was managing yeah. it. And I, he was like, he goes, this is so, because he, he was watching my clips at the time, and he goes, this is so great. We're passing it around the office. Everybody loves it. Yeah. Tim's doing a bit called the tweet song right now, and it broke my heart. I was like, oh, no, now it's going to look like yeah. I just ripped Tim's thing off, which I didn't, uh, but yeah. it's like no. Tim's doing it. He's bigger than me, so it'll be. So when I got on the bus and you were like, dude, I think we could do that together. We could both yeah. play, and nobody else in my crew that travels with me plays music like you do. Right. I think it'd be fun. I was like, this is going to be fun, and we did it that weekend, and the last night, of that three day run, we did it, and you let me have the last mm -hmm. joke. Like he, Tim, let me have the last joke in the run because it was oh, the nice. middle of the show, yeah. and then oh, he's going to do the last. I do 40. remember. And I got a standing ovation in the middle of the show, and then I ran over and I hugged Tim. I, like I was just going to put my guitar down, and I like hugged Tim. <laughs> <laughs> and even Sweet. as I'm hugging him, I'm, I'm thinking this is too soon. <laughs> this is way too soon. <laughs> No. So yeah. I felt it too. I thought like, we're going to be buddies. I think we're going to be. That's yeah. awesome. Well, it was, I let you have the last because it was the funniest. It was one of the best but jokes it's still I think like, I've ever heard. I remember. But that's the thing of like, everybody doesn't feel that. Like, I try to really carry that with me, honestly, when I do shows and I'm, there's up and coming comics that I'll try to take out with me right. sometimes. And I'm like, I remember that spirit of the show. You were like, I just want a great show. Yeah. Go kill it. Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, is it okay if I sell my stuff? And you're like, go make all the money you can. Yeah. Yeah. For Please. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Like, I know you're struggling. Sell all the well, shirts. Well, that was, we know. came to that realization pretty soon. Uh, like, yeah. oh, okay, let's, uh, let's bring on these other comics and try to make them stars. Right. But I don't think we really, because it was all about kind of viral. And it's like, I don't know how to go viral. Yeah, I, nobody really knows. Nobody yeah. really knows. Yeah. Yeah. So we're like, well, we think the, the best thing is to get these people in front of as many people get as exposure, possible. Exposure, exposure. Yeah. And so that it was, was like, well, it was, was a such thrill. a gift Fine. and I'll never yeah. forget it. It was like, yeah, that's I, a good I always, story. whenever, yeah, whenever I talk about, you know, because you know, that, that's kind of a touchstone. If I talk about comedy and people know that I worked with you, like people remember you and know you. And I'm yeah. like, well, I mean, I always try to set the stage of like, this was like, I was doing comedy four years, which is like five minutes in comedy. Yeah. If you're doing comedy four years. You're still years, a baby. Yeah, yeah. And here I get to go on this bus. But it's amazing I'm, though, still that you had, you had a, you had a, you a had lot, lot of material yeah, yeah. in that short period of time. I, I was, it was a, it's a blur to think about. Like if I was to try to do it now, you ever have that now where you're like, you mm -hmm. didn't know to be afraid then. Yes. No. Now, you know, you're, you're, yes. you got all these hangups, but back then you're just like, exactly. well, let's try you didn't know to be no. af afraid of the ignorance is bliss. Yeah. I know that's why we always say that. <laughs> I didn't know Lo how bad love I was. Is blind I would have quit. And yeah. Ignorance is. I'd be like, honey, they just didn't get it. They're dumb. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, it was oh, never like his. I don't know how much longer I can. <laughs> when we were younger, it was. But then after a while, you go, wait a minute, we got to change something up here. That's right, right. Cause these no, these people are a little more intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> this you group suck. in particular. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you suck, but you're getting better. Let's just come on. Let's get real. Well, what's then, the thing like Lenny good. Bruce said? about because you know there's comedians that treat the audience almost like with contempt oh yeah yeah like i'm gonna go out there in these rubes and then like lenny bruce would say which i'm not a huge lenny bruce guy but he would say individual audience members can be stupid but together they're a genius <laughs> and you used to say that you'd say the audience is your best friend oh yeah. they'll yeah. tell you if you have anything yeah. right they'll let you know if you yeah. have something especially a a, a sober church crowd yeah yeah <laughs> right they what's the shonda sure. line shonda used to say i don't do clubs but i've been in a lot of churches that could have used a two drink minimum <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's good. true i mean it'd be nice to yeah to <laughs> loosen up a little bit but it's once again it's like christians are yeah church people are really nice but they won't laugh. Yeah, it's not funny. They'll be polite, but they're not going to give you laughs. You have right. to make yeah. someone laugh. Yeah. yeah, and and I've heard that my whole. Well, they'll just laugh at anything you say. Uh, no, no they, they won't. won't. Yeah, I promise you. <laughs> Come to a show. Might, but, yeah, they will not. <laughs> You've got to. You got to bring it. Do you think you get like I when I watched uh, the Seinfeld documentary comedian where he was going That's back so out and starting over? Yeah. He would talk yep. about that, and they would ask him, like, do you think you have such gravitas with a crowd because your show is the most popular sitcom ever? He was like, I think I have five minutes yeah, of them we giving me a – Well, it's yep. Jerry. We know it's going to be okay. Yeah. If yep. this one doesn't land, we give him four more of these, and then we're going to start we're, – we're hoping – they're hoping you're right. going to be great, but what do you think? You have audiences that have been coming to your shows for years – and they come, your face is on the ticket. They've bought a ticket. They're going to laugh their $30 worth. Yep. But how much time, is there a clock in your head going like, they're going to give me how much time? Uh, th 
15 seconds <laughs> where you can still lose yeah. a crowd yeah. in 15 seconds. Oh, yeah. But you know yeah. you can, you know so you can get them back, can. but it does, you can feel that loss. Mm -hmm. It is interesting that you, I can you, feel that it. you can still feel oh, yeah. it. Yeah. But that's what makes it fun. Yeah. And it would, it would stink if, if, yeah, if it was, if it was. Yeah, like there was that. an old Twilight Zone. You know, Twilight Zone's always had those weird twists. And there was one where this guy is like robbing a bank or, and he's escaping from the cops and then he gets shot. And then the next scene is him in this mansion and it's whatever and this guy shows up and is his servant and he's like there's food everywhere whenever he snaps his fingers there's girls there's right. pool. he hits a pool ball and all the pool balls go in <laughs> and he's just like kim jong kim jong il he, he thinks he's in heaven yeah yeah he's like i'm a bank robber but here i am and then the assistant's like oh, anything else and finally he goes i'm bored like yeah yeah this, i don't like this yeah and finally the, the hook of the episode is he goes i just want to go to the other place and he goes this is the other place. So basically, hell was you get whatever you want. Oh, yeah. Every pool shot goes in. So that monotony, like you said, we think we want it, but yeah. like you yeah. need that chance that you might bomb. That's yeah. what that's the juice. Right. Right. right? right. Yep. Well, if you're hitting, you know, you play golf that way, every shot was exactly what we wanted, you'd be like, okay. Yeah. That's gonna work. It's huh? a boring game. It, right. Yeah. yeah, a game yeah. that you like a video game that you can beat right away yeah it doesn't yeah. work yeah. like you're like this was awful what a waste of 50 dollars yeah. i beat it the first night you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know we used to do that with for pac-man they would have the the books yeah that show you the how to win codes. Yeah. yeah oh yeah, yeah yeah and then the patterns you're just you're just a robot yeah, yeah. just trying to follow the sheet yeah, yeah you're just a monkey yeah, yeah. it is interesting fun. though like that that's how that. it's with kids though when you're raising kids and you treat them like that where they can have whatever they want and do whatever they want it just is like they're miserable because they act out. Mm -hmm. like, oh, exactly. Big time. Yeah, that's a good point. And yeah, like, this ain't working. Yeah, you want like bound. We we push against boundaries, but you need you need it. Yeah. Like, well, um, you feel like they're not being themselves anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're not. They're just doing what they think you want to. What's like uh, what want. was Leave It to Beaver? Like the Eddie Haskell character was the most polite <laughs> character. Yeah. To all the adults, he was like, right. "You're looking lovely today, Mrs. Cleaver." Yeah. Like, but exactly. he was the shady guy. <laughs> right. He was all fake. He just Jeez. learned. He so learned how to talk like an adult. <laughs> right. But then when the adults so leave, he's just like punching just the kid, <laughs> and he's horrible. You know. But he learned the language. You know. Was it a funny. Ben Stiller movie where he was he was the nurse? Right. Yeah. He's just so nice, and he locks the door, and he's just just totally annihilates. Yeah. The oh yeah, that's in. Uh, yeah, Adam Sandler. Yeah, Adam Sandler movie. Where is the grandmother in the in the nursing home? What movie home. is that? I don't he's remember. like going, you know, she, the guy walks away. He's like slick. He's just, that was one uh, more word I out of you. I Some this. Adam Sandler is movie. Is it Meet the Fockers or Meet the? No, meet he the, is a nurse though in that no. one too. Oh, that's You're right. A one. That's weird. But <laughs> this is where he's. No, it's a, it's a Happy Gilmore. Yeah, yeah. He's the, he's happy the Gilmore. <laughs> yeah because his ben grandmother's in the nursing home. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So funny. Yeah, but I think there there is totally something to that. There has to be some level of uncertainty like like before a show if i'm not you know kind of a little that that nervous yeah kind of people movement, isn't that, that a, would isn't be, did you get that question all the time do you still get nervous tim yeah. and like yeah it's like it's do not you? like what you think it's excitement yeah it's not, well at the beginning it's like crippling yeah the beginning you're just like it's the pains you yeah. get you get yeah. sharp pains uh-huh and you're laying in you know you're just laying in the hotel bed i would the whole i day. would have a, i would have like here Thinking about a show coming up, I would get like oh. a sick feeling in my stomach. Like I have to go do this, but now it's like excitement, and then you feel like relief when that first joke lands. You're like, okay, mm -hmm. wow. it's like, oh, a, it's this will be like every other night. That like one landed, then that means this one will land. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're now, in, would you guys rather do a room full of men, a room full of women, or a room full of kids? Oh man, um, or teen. And right. let me what put a fourth think? or teens. Okay. Well, I've been when I'm doing a bunch of youth stuff at the beginning. I think that's what I was kind of geared to do. That's the first time I saw you. You know that, right? Yeah. yeah. 2000. Where? I saw Tim in 2006. Where? At a youth convention. Where was, was that? Where was it? In Chattanooga. Chattanooga. And I was oh a youth leader. I hadn't. I, I wasn't even thinking about doing comedy yet. Oh wow! And like this bozo. 2006. <laughs> it was. I was like, this guy. I got a guitar. I can try. I can't even remember. Uh, but yeah. So what happened was it was uh. It was Assemblies of God thing. And so these these conventions are so hyper spiritually. I mean, they're very like intense. So yeah. Friday night service, kids are like at the altar praying and snotting on themselves. I mean, it's like intense. Yeah. And then they go, then we'll take a break. Everybody yeah. goes across the street at the convention center and gets like pepperoni pizzas. And then come yeah. back. Then we'll have the comedian. I go, this poor guy. Whoever they're bringing out at 11 p.m. Yeah. To do an yeah. hour of comedy yeah. for these kids. Tim came out, he destroyed. It was like 
a force in Nate. And I was oh, like, wow. what in the world? I didn't know about Christian comedy. Like, I had yeah. kind of pulled away from that world. I didn't know, like, outside of, like, Mike Warnke when I was a kid. Yeah. Right. So I didn't That's know there was, sad. like, 20 of those guys now that were in the circuit yeah. doing it. And so I was like, who is this guy? But you, I think you were doing, you opened with, uh, I work at Subway. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And I think you closed yeah. with the seven, the seventies and six bit. minutes. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, that was fun back then. Mm-hmm. And I remember just thinking like, whoa, I, did, I had such respect for that. You could hold their attention yeah. for that long, having just been through what they went through. Yeah. And yeah, I, I think wild. with young people, I found out early, like adults like self-deprecating humor. Mm-hmm. Kids like it when the other person gets it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of strange. Oh, yeah, that is when the other person gets it, they love sure. this. And they just, they really love insecure. audience, any kind of audience participation. Yeah. Where you're getting them involved. You know, it's, it's, it's. Yeah. So which of the four do you, would you I mean, prefer? now, now it's just adult, like people our age. So men, That's, a but room if you had to men choose, or if you women? had to choose all no. women, wouldn't you say all women is like the easiest laughs? All women. women are not guarded. Yeah. Oh, there's so many reasons. Yeah, women is women control the laughter in a room anyway. Yeah. So if you do a, a room and the women are arm foldy or they're distracted, then you're not going to do well. If women start laughing at you, they will set off. It's like a bomb. I wonder why. Yeah. It, well, just, okay. Women, when they you do a women's conference, they're away from the kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're away from their husband. Right. They're with their friends. They love to laugh and they love to connect. They want you to succeed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, they're like. Right, that mothering energy takes over. Yes. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, that emotional Nurturing. connection, and it's nuts. And then you, women in a prison, that's just, that's. Oh, the, yeah, I did a women's prison earlier this year, and the, it was unbelievable. It's, it's, yeah, he loved that. It's ridiculous. He loved doing that. But once again, if you did <clears throat> those all the time, it would be like, you know, Oxycontin probably, <laughs> where that first one is just like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then after yeah. a while, you're like. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is a it, lot. It's, it's a lot. But I want to <clears throat> revisit this idea that w- women govern the laughter in a show. I wonder why. I don't or know. What do you think that is? Well, here's here's one thing about men, too. And Tim, you may have seen this before where <clears throat> men who every man thinks they're funny, too. Oh, yeah. So oh, okay. they sometimes don't want to see. It's almost like a jealousy kicks in where they don't want to see their woman laughing harder at Tim <laughs> than they might get a laugh. Yeah. You do that. So they'll yeah. you'll see them look over like, yeah. oh, you like that guy. So, But a woman is just, women are just unfettered and they're not closed off the way men can. But not every man's the same. That's kind of a gender role thing. But Sure. Because yeah. I'm very sensitive. But I'm saying like, mo- generally speaking, yeah, women are just like ready to laugh right away. Men, yeah. like if you if I get introduced to the men, and I love doing men's conferences, but if I get introduced like, get ready to laugh. Oh, yeah. This no. comedian's coming to the stage. People, men, you can see men going, oh, really? Oh, really? Like, they're already folding their <laughs> prove arms. Prove it, yeah. You have to totally. prove it to men. Totally. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, you can get them, but women are already open and ready. Yeah. So it's but a good But do you balance. prefer that challenge to try to get the men la- to laugh? Or do you like where I, it does come easy? Yeah, I mean. Or both. I think maybe. it depends. Like, if you're working, if you're workshopping, let's say you have a bit on hunting and you have a bit about falling off your bike and you have a bit that's like more, you go, this is going to be more relatable to that I'm trying out. Yeah. Sometimes it's related on what material you're doing too. Like, oh, I bet men will like this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But um like if I did the tubing story, like getting pulled behind a tube in yeah. Minnesota and almost dying. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's something that's pretty aggressive. It's pretty yeah. uh you can can be physical. I think men like physical comedy too. Yeah. yeah. They like I, I think they're more silly. Yeah. I, I they'll go to a sillier place. Like when you're with your buddies, it's silliness. It's yeah. complete dumb. You know, putting the sugar on, you know, right, right, on, right. You know, where the girl, women be like, okay, I get it. No, yeah. man, we want to push it. We want to push it farther. <laughs> That's true. So That's so true. It's, yeah, without women make the world go around as far as comedy. They're so fun. I did concerned. these events last year and it was for Gateway Church in Dallas and they had these, they do them at every ca- campus. They have five campuses and at every one they would have these huge <clears> things on the stage. They, were, they spelled out the word laugh and it was this huge metal letters that said laugh and they have on the light, stage? light bulbs in them. Yeah. yeah. And then they, I realized I have not walked out. I did my sound check, but then they didn't show me how to get back like from the stage. So I'm getting ready to go on and I go, I guess I got to walk through these letters. <laughs> and I, this was like, this was years ago. So I guess I go through the L because there's a I went through the opening. U. I stepped through the you U. You went through the U. Okay. Oh, okay. And I was like, I was 300 pounds then. This was years ago. And I was Just like. Just take it with you. <laughs> I literally. He took the U. You know how you think you know how big you are? Right. And then you're like, I get, it's like operation. <laughs> I was like, you know what I'm saying? I was touching the sides. It was, like if this U falls over, can you imagine like that starts the show? Oh my a big gosh. crashing. 
Just, just, yeah. <laughs> you just have to act like you meant to do that. So there's five minutes of them trying to put the U back up yeah. and oh solder God. it. I took a picture of it too because at the end of the show, they were breaking down the stage. And I took a picture of the laugh on stage. And then at the end of it, like they were taking, I swear to you, the letters, they were bringing them down slowly. And there was just like the end of it was the L and the A were down. So it just said, ugh. <laughs> There's a picture of me like, tonight's show was, you know, <laughs> one of those. <laughs> it's all right. Wow. Yeah. That's funny. But that's funny. Yeah, I had, when I was big, it was the way I was like, I was like, I bet I would fit through there. And like you'd start squeezing by people in a crowded theater. And you're like, no, yeah. I'm bigger than my butt is bigger than I think. I know. I have no awareness, spatial <laughs> like, awareness it. of myself. Yeah. Yeah. We we went to uh, um, a f- the popcorn festival in KZ, Illinois, as you which do. you've heard of this weekend. Of course, you've, you've heard of course. Of. That's the what world we did famous. This weekend. Yes, and it is actually world famous. He'll tell you why, but go on. It is it is world famous, and <laughs> it's just this small that you know this little festival in this cute little town. And we saw some bands, you know, there's two nights where they had the the main stage mm-hmm. and then they had the tent. Yeah. Which, Beer gardens. and then the main stage was uh, just really good bands and, you know, yeah. wonderful yeah, sound and just good. ripping it. These Nashville guys are just ripping it. Yeah, but after the song, it's just like, there's too, no, you know, it, it, you know, the crowd, some people would clap in the crowd. Oh yeah. You couldn't really hear it. Yeah. But you couldn't. It was just, the energy was just not. Interesting. And, and then you go to the tent afterwards, and it was one of the best sets. Yeah, because it was so closed heard. in. Yeah. It was enclosed, and it was. Yeah. yeah. Um, he was like, I'd like to play in there. Yeah, that's that's kind of when people say, like, do you ever get heckled or have to deal with that? And really, it's not so much that. It's just the environment. Oh, what's. Oh, your phone's going off, huh? Oh, sorry. Timer. Um, is. Uh, the casserole's ready. <laughs> <laughs> She has like 30 alarms on her thing. I do. Um, protocols. But yeah, it was, it, it, it's just more enclosed. It's more, yeah. it, you'd think it wouldn't be in that big of a deal, but no. that it's more the, the environment. It like, limits those distractions. Those like, Hey squirrel moments of like, we're all sitting now and we're facing the same way. Whereas if you're in a field somewhere and there's a stage, you're just like, Oh look, it's like, there's you so don't many have things. to be engaged. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You don't have to be. It was fun though. And I think people really enjoyed the bands that were up there that they were watching, at least That's the one cool. we saw. Yeah. But you know, it was super chill and it was like very spread out yeah. and lots of people mm-hmm. in there. Yeah. yeah. Well, but music can be enjoyed passively like that. Yeah. That's kind of, yeah, and okay. I think that people really enjoyed it, yeah. but it's, it's just, not, you feel kind of sorry for the band. I yeah. did. Afterwards, it's just it like three seconds of clapping and a couple of women. Woo! Well, I thought what was interesting about this too, is listening to the guy and I forgot his name, Josh Riggs. No, I don't know. And Levi Riggs, Levi Riggs. So that's they have a, a lot of energy. A, that's a front man's name right there. Yeah, I know. I love that. That's what or I like said Or like a quarterback too. for Texas. I know. I was like, <laughs> you yeah, know what I'm saying? Levi Riggs, he plays for the Longhorns or he's going to I was like, this is band. a great yeah. name. He's throwing straight but, dimes a day, boy. <laughs> he's throwing lasers, man. Levi Riggs. <laughs> but it's Shoot. interesting because the band was good and they had this harmonic, this guy who played their harmonica that was amazing. Yeah. He was actually on. Um, America's Got Talent. Yeah. One of those. Yeah. yeah. And um, anyway, so they were. You know, but his voice wasn't that great. I was like, well, this isn't, it's good. Yeah. But the voice isn't that good. But I like the writing, blah, 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 back and forth. And he looked it up and he is a songwriter. Okay. So as soon as I knew he was a songwriter, then I was all in. Because yeah. songwriters like, usually aren't the best singers. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. okay with it. Like, I'm okay with him not singing good because yeah. I know that songwriters aren't the best, but singers. Oh, this is but why then he I was sucks. like, oh, okay, this is so good. Is Then I yeah, was appreciating was his lyrics. Right. Yeah, it's incredible. Great songwriter. We went to the Opry because a buddy of mine, Brian Bates, he did comedy on the Opry for the first time. And so I went to support him. Oh, really? Really That's cool. Awesome. He got to stand in the circle and all that. Oh, oh really how cool. cool. So I went. That's and so that, awesome. That night, this guy came out to close the show and he goes, my name's, I can't remember what his name was. And he goes, uh, they introduced him as like 47 time award winner. I was like, whoa. And he walks out and they go, he tells it, he's wearing a polo shirt and jeans, he tells his name and everybody goes, everybody claps. And he goes, y'all don't know who I am. You know, yeah. And he goes, Let, I'm just going to play some songs. He starts playing the gambler. Then he played, you say it best. He when wrote you, that. Yeah. He, then oh, he starts wow. playing, you say it best when you say nothing at all. Oh he played my like, gosh. he played like that five songs song. that are like, I don't even listen to country and I know all right. of the words right. to these songs. Right, right, right. Do you like, know who it is? I cannot remember who it was, oh, but no. it blew my mind. I go, this guy wrote, this guy is printing money. Yeah. 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 He lives in a diamond house. Yes. Exactly. Like, he's got mailbox money. <laughs> well, that's every why it's day. fun to go to the Bluebird Cafe because yeah. a lot of those people are writers. Yeah. yeah. That's great. And I just appreciate the process mm-hmm. and what they're saying about how they decided on the lyrics of that yeah. song and stuff. And it's like, 
Yeah, who's that fun. one? We saw the one lady, and she's got the dish pan hair or whatever, and she's yeah. just got the T-shirt and oh, everything. She and wrote some amazing she's like, stuff. Oh, we're waiting for, oh, okay, whatever. And she, like, wrote, uh, what was that? The, the Aerosmith did it. Um, oh, uh, Don't Want to Miss a Thing? Don't Want to Miss a Thing. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that crazy? It's like, it's wow. And just them sitting around telling the stories I like I like stories. Yeah. You, you're you a big music person. Like I, When I yeah. met you, I thought it was fascinating to meet you because I grew up, all my heroes were comedians, and you're a very successful comedian, but you want to be a rock star. Like you, oh, totally. all your heroes were musicians. <laughs> totally. And, and yeah. so you were like, I use comedy so that I can do the scream from immigrant song. <laughs> exactly. In a bit. That's the only That's reason it. you got it right. So so I grinded place, out for 20 years yeah, just so, so I could somehow right. do the immigrant song. Maybe just in a some little bit. I thought that was so fascinating. Iteration. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, well, it's yeah. that I get more motivated. That's what motivates me more is, is music as uh-huh. opposed to comedy. Right. Now, comedy does, Honestly, motivate me yeah. when I see a good comedian I'm like oh I want to be a better writer this you remember that you know just how mm-hmm. fun it is to come up with a new bit but yeah oh music totally it's but just of course you're gonna have to be funny because both your parents are funny oh yeah and then you have a lot of music a lot of, and a lot of parodies family. really the songs I choose are ones I like I just want yeah it's an excuse your mom. To sometimes I'd say don't wreck that song I love that song yeah. don't wreck that one what's I the know, worst the one parodies what's yeah. the worst do you think one was ever... an Elton John song that you were gonna do and I don't know if you ever did it I oh can't it's uh your song your thong yeah, and I was like, please don't, I, I don't. do that. Because well, I love it, you can tell everybody. Song. You, can, little, you can it, tell everybody I'm wearing a thong. Yeah, wearing a thong. It may be quite painful, but now that it's on. <laughs> yeah, it what was, was the good. Main part? It was good. It was a, it's oh, a little bit so nice. funny, the feeling down there. I just got tired of my old underwear. Oh, that's great. But <laughs> Well, now you play piano. You really could Thank do it. Thank you for not doing that. Uh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and you, can tell. <laughs> you can tell everybody I'm wearing a thong. We have a thong. Well, I remember when I met you Gosh. and we were doing shows together and then I came over to your house and we were writing and you told me that you had a parody because I said, you know, I had an idea for a song about Hey There Delilah and then I saw yours and so I just threw mine away. And I'm sure you've heard that before. Like I had a Hey There Delilah and it was about Samson or whatever. Really? And then I saw yours and I was like, all right, well, his is, his already, all the jokes are, I had a few other ones. Right. But I was like, ah, it's been done. And then you go, it happened, he goes, you go, I had a song that I didn't do because I heard yours. And I go, what? And I had oh, been yeah. doing comedy five years or whatever at that point. And yeah. it was because I cool. do. It's so greasy. And you had one about it's not easy to be three. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. What song is it? Though? It's, uh, it's uh, five for fighting. It's not easy. I can't stand to fly. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. But yeah. his was mm-hmm. about being three years old. And mine was yeah. about being a fry cook. And it's so greasy. It was just, it's it so was greasy at Mickey D's. That is a good song to pair. But like, though. it's just interesting to think like you were like, yeah, yeah it's it's been done. And. Yeah, the one, I mean, there's there's ones that I've done that are just kind of club songs that yeah. I really can't do. There's a Cat Stevens' it's Wild World. Oh, yeah. It's called Girls Gone Wild Girl. <laughs> that you wrote? <laughs> oh, baby, you're a girls gone wild girl. <laughs> oh, yeah. I didn't know about that one. Oh, yeah. That one's edgy. It yeah. was. That you, is... couldn't that. you couldn't do that at the, uh, the First Assemblies Baptist of God Convention. <laughs> <Gosh>. <laughs> Probably where's everybody not. going well, come back i did this story you know how you do when you you get you do these youth things yeah and you're there on the weekend and you're on stage 10 times right so you got to do 10 they five want minute a piece spots. of you man yeah they want yeah. every little bit of it and i ran out of stuff uh-huh. so i told the the embarrassing story where i walked in with oh, a jock right. strap okay to really surprise happened. my my buddy who is my roommate not but me. he's with his girlfriend <laughs> in the kitchen carving a pumpkin <laughs> And then I do the whole story where I, where I too. slipped and I turn around, I slipped on the floor and I'm just spread right. eagle with a jock strap and a, and a clown mask. It's and, true. and in the morning, Heather was with me and this guy comes knocking on the door yeah. before the last session. Yeah. And he said, man, you, talking about that story. He goes, you got to apologize for that story. Oh no. Yeah. And then I go, what? I go, really? Oh, why? He goes, man, they're thinking of, pe- of somebody's butt, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do not remember you put this. your butt in their mind. <laughs> right. They're thinking about your butt <laughs> right now. Was it a even thing? now? No, I think he actually said they're thinking about your butthole. <laughs> was butthole? Oh my gosh! Was the guy kind I said, of what? laughing? All of them? <laughs> was he kind of laughing at all? No, no, no. He so was, was just super. Oh, this is serious. Youth, youth, youth directors, bless oh, their hearts. Yeah. They're getting yeah. it from all sides. Oh gosh. Well, yeah, I the know. parents are overprotective. So if they if a kid <laughs> comes did, home but... and says this guy told a jock strip, then they're going to get oh. the emails, and you're not. What's this? I sent my kids to. Uh, well you got a letter from a baptist preacher about the um little blanket on the airplane because 
of where you said it, co- it could only cover. Oh, uh, it's covering part of my nipple. Yeah. yeah and I that, said the word nipple. That was a nice letter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think About a two pager. I, I it said a line the other day that I, you did it in a vamp one day. You did. I don't even know if you ever did it other than that one time you ad libbed it. You said uh, you had a bit about your dad's nipple would fall off or something in a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm, my dad had nipples. He was a Christian man with nipples. Right, right. He had he, nipples. He was covered in them. And you go, he like had a, a lot of them. He like <laughs> was like a cat. <laughs> You were making up for that, that one. one. I so that funny, one. like the were, idea of were like, you making, up making for that it time? okay. <laughs> like okay, he's right. Christian men have nipples. He had a lot of them. It's like oh god, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> you going. know, one of my favorite stories about about Johnny is that when I was playing, uh, they sent me the McPherson guitars. They yeah. sent me the you know like the they were made out of carbon. You know, great guitars right. and stuff. But I this this guitar was like the electronics were going on. I was getting kind of tired of playing. I'd pl- playing for a year or two or something right. like that. And I just kind of fed up with it. And it was just, I kind of barely made it through the first set and you were coming up next. Yeah. Um, and then I just, I, and what happened was I went to introduce Johnny and my foot got stuck on the cord and the, the guitar fell over. Oh, no. And I was like, oh, oh. So I just had this thing in my mind. I just I picked up that guitar and I did Pete Towns and sma- just smashed. Oh, you it were there for that on the ground. Yes. Just smashed it, and everybody just went crazy. It was just it was oh it was one of those. It was once crazy. in a lifetime. It was nuts because yeah. he had just done the Star Spangled Banner bit. Right. It was kind and of. It was getting. It was in a rural Kentucky theater, mm-hmm. full packed, full of people, thousand people, <laughs> and it got applause breaks <clears throat> like. Places it had never gotten. People were right. crazy for that bit. <laughs> wow. And then the guitar falls off the stand, yeah. and then he smashes then the guitar. Something in my head was like, do it. <laughs> do the Garth Brooks, smash the guitar. So I smashed wow. it. It's in, you know, three pieces, and I give it to this kid in the front row. <laughs> And then he, but Johnny had no idea what had just happened. <laughs> was it his, it wasn't his guitar. No, no, no. Okay, good. Just afterwards, he's like, what the heck happened? Because <laughs> I already have to follow Tim. It's the middle of the show and Tim's usually done like potty train or some crazy big show stopping number. Yeah. Like Marty once said that about me, my buddy Marty, he was like, oh, I love Marty. he goes, I'm on a show with you and you do all this show stopping stuff. And I go, oh, thanks. He goes, it's not a compliment. <laughs> it's like, stop it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, stop <laughs> You're it. making yourself hard to follow. So I have to follow Tim anyway. And now it's like, now he's, blown up the stage right you know they're still like, like oh they're still gosh. like you know particles from the guitar flying yeah, yeah, in the yeah. air i'm just like hey guys <laughs> no no well, well that's my cute well, that's joke. the thing it's yeah. that's the thing it's like one joke in and you've got them uh, and plus it's 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 like the the people that i took with me they were always you guys were always able to maintain yeah oh yeah because my just, favorite thing about that night though was two things one was you asked me later in the show you had you had more guitar stuff to do and you go Johnny, is it okay if I use your guitar? I go, I kind of give you this look <laughs> like, like uh, I don't use the guitar. Yes. <laughs> Destroy it. the guitar. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I broke all my toys. Can I play with your toys? <laughs> Johnny, do you like do you like this guitar? <laughs> How do you feel How much about do you it? like it? <laughs> you just like start peeling off hundred dollar bills. Yeah. I'll buy whatever. I, I'll buy each and every one of you in here. <laughs> it's going I'm well. Tim Hawkins. It's going well. Oh I can gosh. say nipple and get away with it. <laughs> Apparently yeah. now. But yeah, you can. then then it was a, a year or two later I had another one of those guitars. Yeah. And then I was I was like, okay, I've you know this story. It might have been at the same place. But um yeah, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do my first set and do the guitar and I'm gonna give it to a kid in the It front was the right. last show of the tour. That right? was yeah. that was the last show before COVID. Yep. That I did. You I were, wasn't there, but I saw the oh, video. Jenny, okay. Yeah. So yeah, you did I saw see the video, video too. I didn't wasn't there. So I was thinking, oh, I was so excited. It's just oh gonna be gosh. such a special moment. And I, I just walk over to the kid and I'm handing it to him. I step off the stage. I slip off the stage and basically just oh, broke my ankle. He yeah. broke it, yeah. Fell down fell in, fell on top of a lady and then <laughs> And, and then everybody's thinking back. it was a joke. Yeah, they think it's part of the show. It's a and it's fall. just searing pain. Yeah, <laughs> going through my body. And it's like and he's walking back. You know, then luckily you were at the piano after that. But yeah, so I had to finish. I had to finish. But that was rough. The show on it just was the piano. Crazy. Just, just sweat. You know, I've got. Yeah, I've just, got that video. We need to. I'll give it to you. Give producer. It to, yeah. This episode of the Tim Hawkins Podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. You ever find that just as you're trying to fall asleep, your brain is like, hey, I'm not tired. Here's a thousand thoughts I'm going to dump on you. But but I, I want to sleep. Nope, I don't want to. Here's some things I want to put on a loop for the next three hours. 
Well, it turns out one great way to make those racing thoughts go away is to talk them through. Therapy gives you a place to do that. So you can get out of these negative thought cycles and find some mental and emotional peace. You know, therapy has been a great experience for me. It's just maintenance for ourselves. New challenges come up all the time. New coping skills are needed. Therapy helps you set healthy boundaries and puts you in a position to grow and create and control the things you have control over. Give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Hawkins today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Hawkins. Have you ever had, have you ever had anybody like Never do mind. your stuff? Or, yeah. or like, yeah, um, the, was, yeah, uh, it was funny because I was just thinking. No, about usually, that. usually it's okay though. Like a kid does it for their talent show or something. Yeah, and I'm like, good. oh, that's cool. I said one yeah. time a kid did it in my church and he did a bunch of my one liners. Right. And he won like the big sash of like Mr. Mount Juliet High School oh, or whatever. Cute. And I was that's like, sweet. I was like, this is true. I go, I'm just so glad that someone is being made popular from my jokes in high school because they didn't help me at all. No. <laughs> you, know, like, no. you know, like some pretty girl yeah. liked him now because he's my joke. Oh, I was he's like, got a Dude, sash. This is amazing. I didn't get a sash. Oh, he's killing it now. <laughs> I got a swirly. Oh, she's got a little but the, harem. But the thing I remember around. that night uh, from the sm guitar smashing to the second thing was that if you remember Aaron and, uh, uh, Maddox were on the road with you getting footage that weekend yeah. and the bus broke down. So they didn't bring any of their gear to that show. Yeah. And then they left early. Cause they're like, well, if we're not going to film, we'll just go home. So they're on the way home and I text them. You're not going to believe what just happened. And Aaron thinks I'm making it up. Yeah. I go, Tim did the, the star spangled banner bit better than he's ever done it. The crowd's nuts. It's like something out of a movie. Then he smashed the guitar. Oh my gosh. And Aaron thinks he goes, no, he didn't. <laughs> Because they're not there to film it. Like, the right. one thing. Like, right. they got all this banal, like, stuff, right. benign stuff the yeah, whole weekend. Yeah. Just regular shows. And then mm. the minute they're not filming, yeah. you smash a guitar. Wow. And it's legend, though. You shoot it's fire legend. out of your butt. I know. <laughs> Did you know that he had video of it, though? Because No, there's no video of that. But I'm saying there is video of the guitar, uh, the, the ankle thing. The ankle thing, somebody, yes. Somebody right. was I have filming it and that's sent the, it. That's the one I've seen. Somebody's got it. I bet. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's out there. So I'll give you it to them. Of the guitar smashing or the other? No, I don't think the guitar smashing there's video of it. But maybe someone out there does. The yeah. fan. The, listen, if you want a free Tim Hawkins T-shirt, <laughs> it just says that right. video. T H Crew. It's T H Crew. Not right. that great, but yeah. <laughs> but no, we did, it was it was so fun. It was just we just had it was a, a good times. It was a fun way to do it. I mean, because we had all I so I I was doing the bus thing. Yeah. That's when you first met me because I remember. Yeah, like you were already on the with bus. Smiley and those guys. We used to just rent cars and drive all over the place. Really, but, but the bus was fun just because. We had, you know, just a lot of good hang time, and I still I told a story. Guys. I told a story from the road with you uh, this past show that I did because I was doing like a ninety minute show, and so I was just telling like some stories because they were really with me, and so I was talking about being a college pastor, which I was, and I said, you know, every person's a college pastor, or every person that does college ministry, they always get this guff because it's like the generation beneath us is always like, oh, they're going to be the godless whatever they don't they're not going to be like us they're not going to get this thing they're all they're you mean all, the younger people aren't yeah, going to get it yeah they're always like oh they're on their video games or whatever they're right. not going to get the, and that's never true but we always look down on the next generation coming up and i said i was yeah. a college pastor let me just tell you something then i started doing comedy full-time i started traveling with tim hawkins and then they'd all cheer and i go he's not coming <laughs> i go you couldn't afford him you got me with a group on <laughs> but then i would that's tell good. the story that's of good. us being on the road i said i was on tour with tim 2013 I was a college pastor and I was doing it part time, and we as we're in Kearney, Nebraska, and we had to be in Denver, Colorado that night for two sold out shows. Tim was doing, and the bus won't start, and Tim's freaking out. We're going to cancel the shows. Tim's going to lose thousands of dollars. We're freaking out, but we're going to pull the plug on him. And I knew one church. I said I knew one church. I'd been there the yeah. year before in the smaller church. I call this guy. Heather. This was in Colorado, wasn't it? No, it was, this was in Kearney, Nebraska. We had to be in Colorado. <laughs> oh, in the middle that of night. nowhere. And we've so got to be in Colorado. Yeah. So I called this one guy that I knew, and it was Sunday morning. He was getting ready to go on stage. He goes, one more verse. He told the guy, he saw the text. He goes, one more verse. He tells no the way. worship guy. Wow. He go, walks back and returns my text. What's going on? I go, call me. I said, we're broke down. We have to go oh, six hours away. This, he goes, hang on. 
And he goes, let me call you right back. 15 minutes wow. later, he texts me back. He goes, I've got two of my college kids. <clears throat> yes, They're coming with the that. church van. And that they drove so us 12 sweet. hours round trip. Wow. And I said, you know, something I learned that nice. day is that college kids will do anything to get out of going to church. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the big That's a good story. story. That's like, so but good. it really was. I get cool. chills cool, thinking about it. Such a cool story. But that and, was, I remember that because I thought, that's so sweet. We need to send them something, but we didn't know. I know. How to get hold of them. I guess I, I didn't know you they were the connection. They got to go to the show. Yeah. I, think we, I don't know. I think we took care of them. I think you gave them a bunch of DVDs. We sent them home with some swag. Oh, yeah. Probably. And it was, I mean, it was because we had equipment and things like that. And I forget. How, yeah. how it even happened but I we remember. just threw the acoustics we, in the van we threw the acoustics that. in we plugged them in That's and then so awesome. we, we basically drove up and walked up on yeah and and, yeah. and did the show yeah we may have been a few minutes late but right wow it's crazy oh so wild i get chills thinking that. about that was yeah, just one of those so things of like, I know one guy in this city. Let me just see. It was just cool to be <laughs> so helpful. Wild. I was like, I'm the nobody. Let me see if I can. And they were in that same city. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So What's funny sweet. is they had been to the show the night before that you did in the big church. Mm -hmm. They were in a smaller church and they had been to that show because I asked Todd really sheepishly because I've been on the road with you for like, I'd done like 20 shows with you. But I was like, right. I know some people in this town. I said, can I invite their staff like to come? And then Todd was like, how many is it? And I go, it's like six staff members and their wives. He goes, 12 tickets. I go, yeah. Yeah. Is it okay? He goes, we'll make it happen. So he got them all front row. Wow. The next day we needed them. Like that <gasps> wow. was the guy, that was the pastor That's of that so church. Cool. So it's like a funny, like full like circle four, moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. I used to not like Christians now. I Right. Do you see <laughs> That's how? That's a sweet I'm story around. though, because that was like, you know, for yeah. What would we have done? I don't even know. I know. Because. You know, you just cancel and reschedule and yeah, but it's, but it would have yeah. been, oh, yeah, been a, dude. And then all those, like, that's the thing too. Like I'm not there, but I have some, I'm a draw in some places, but to have thousands of people waiting and then you have to, can you've had to cancel shows because of weather and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's brutal, right? Yeah. Cause sometimes people just don't understand no. yeah. that you just no. couldn't make it or they're right. like, what's he afraid of a little snow? Right. You're like, it wasn't no, it's, it's just not, about believe that. me, yeah. we want to do the show. Yeah. yeah. We're leaving a lot of money on the table. <laughs> yeah, here. for sure. <laughs> It's not something Tim can't drive on ice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how dare he? No, I'm yeah, it's it's like the one we were in Iowa uh getting ready it was like a half hour before the show starts and then a tree falls on the electrical whatever wire, one of the wires that goes to that section of the church that's the auditorium. Oh, and I blew out that. all the electricity and it's just like, well, yeah. we're done. Yeah. We can't you can't yeah. do it, but how many have can't have you had to? Well, I had to. I had two. I had eight shows uh, two weeks this year that I had just complete laryngitis. Complete. Oh, oh my gosh, wow. that was like, freaky. Like yeah, that was so wild. I mean, two weeks before I knew the shows, and I was, so, I was like, uh oh. Oh, you already knew. Oh, I, he I was, was like, so there's upset. no way. You knew you weren't going to get better because you yeah. know, even if you can, it kind of clears up. It. You have no strength. And yeah, you and can't. you really go for those notes too. Like you're singing yeah. high, you're doing Axl Rose impressions. You yeah. can't do that with yeah. any compromised vocal. Well, yeah. you had a voice coach. Do you still? You should still keep up with that. Yeah, I know. Just because that's a good I practice. Should. I, I you should. used to do those exercises backstage, and I was like, I used to be doing. I'm drinking a Mountain Dew or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, should I be doing? I'm eating, some a, of this? I'm eating a baby Ruth and drinking a Red Bull. <laughs> this will do it. <laughs> one time I came, you came in. I was probably 300 pounds. You came in, and I was drinking a diet Mountain Dew, and you go. You're drinking diet Mountain Dew. Are you, you're, you're drinking Mountain Dew. I go, it's diet. You go, it's give up juice. <laughs> wow. He, that used to make him mad. I know. That, that always makes him mad when people. I was like, whoa. That easy, makes me mad. It seems coach. like that always has made you mad when big people are, are drinking, drinking. Yeah. And right. I go, it's Soda. diet. It's, Soda. You go, it's give up juice. <laughs> I was like, wow. Am I holding it looking at? Maybe it is. Maybe he's, he's on to something. It's like, no, you can't drink that. You're not allowed. Do you not have that voice? in your head oh yeah i guess saying. not <laughs> saying my no. voice wanted the sudsy good no, stuff diet i wanted, I wanted the fizzy diet. things you oh we just found out our grandbaby calls anything that's you know sudsy like that he yeah. calls it spicy oh okay like so if, he it's, had a spicy, if it's carbonated he calls it spicy yeah so he had a spicy it's blue spicy. drink last night he said that's great that's spicy i go is it really spicy <laughs> yeah seems like a wild drink yeah, but I'm, you're not you're not weighing three hundred something now. No, not even every close. time I look at you. I'm slimming down. I'm Think working about on like one fifty. I'm uh I'm down to ninety eight pounds. <laughs> We're gonna get six four ninety eight pounds. I'm wearing four, eight shirts right now. Six four six four ninety eight. <laughs> and uh, that's good. From, that's true. Yes, felt. I'm from parts unknown. Remember when the old school wrestling? It'd be like from parts unknown. Right. The masked wrestler would come in. I like that. We don't it's even know where he's from. Mm -hmm. He just showed up one day. That was what was cool about your show, too, is like you would just come out. I always thought it was interesting because everybody's got a, in clubs, it's like, 
here's my list of credits. Here's all the stuff. <laughs> yeah, it'd just be like, just hit the, tr- just hit track one and I'll yeah. come out. I got, I got tired of it. They're I, already I, here. Yeah. Well, we just heard a whole blurb, you know, of, of that Riggs guy, Levi Riggs. Yeah. The guy comes up before Dude, Levi. It was yeah. bad. And he's got his phone and, <laughs> and he's he just jumbling through it. Levi is uh, multiple streams. That's a big thing now. He's right. got 20 million streams on mm-hmm. the socials and he has written with, he's open for Jason Aldean and blah, blah, blah. It's like nobody cares. It was cares. like yeah. so hesitant and like, couldn't read it because his I eyes were squared. And I had no real cre- credit. No, but that's what was interesting yeah. though is Things you anyway. built it grassroots at the beginning of YouTube. So it's like they were your people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's like what you want. That's the dream. Right. Because like I have right now, my Facebook exploded this past month or two. Like it went, it grew like 100,000 people. And it's awesome. great, but. They're not my people. Like Zuckerberg could just go under, and now it's like I don't have their emails or anything. Oh, right, right. right yeah, right. but like you had built this cool like infrastructure, all grassroots, and so you don't need the credit. Like they're here to see you. You're Tim yeah. Hawkins. Right. That's enough. Yeah. Whereas everybody else is like trying to cobble together. I, you may have seen me on. Yeah. The best yeah. is Paul Aldrich. He had this bit. He would do. He would go. Uh, I've moved to because Na- I've recently moved to Nashville and. Uh, I've written songs for Bonnie Raitt and Travis Tritt and uh, Loretta Lynn. And everybody would clap and he'd go, and if, if any of you guys know them and you could get these songs to them, I would just love <laughs> <laughs> What a great line. That is so good. I've written oh, the songs. Paul. They won't return my... Oh, That's what Paul. my friend always says. She goes, I... She tells people she writes for Tim Hawkins. She goes, I write for Tim Hawkins. They're like, wow. They're like so interested in trading. She goes... I mean, he doesn't use it. He won't text me back, but, but <laughs> he's blocked my number. But I but. have written them for written these jokes yeah. for him. Yeah, they just, people just don't care. Like uh, Nate Bergazzi's dad, Steven, we'll his intro, him. he'd read this Hilarious. big intro, you know, of his magic act. And he would say, go, this next person coming to the stage recently uh, signed a deal with HBO and Cinemax. Uh, he gets three months for free. I like that or whatever. It's just like he signed right. a deal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he just recently solidified a deal with HBO and Showtime. Right. The first three months are free and oh, so $9.99 cute. a month after that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what a perfect. That's I mean, hilarious. It's so if you have a clever intro that's like, oh yeah. My favorite ever is Claiburn Cox, who you know mm-hmm. is fantastic. He would say, this next person coming to the stage has been on Late Night with Jimmy Fallon, not once, not twice, but zero times. Right. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Yeah, that's, that, really that's I had the, the, you've heard of, I had that, that would happen to say, you've heard of Jay Leno, Dave Letterman. He's not been on any of those shows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah that's not like, once, oh, not twice, but zero times. At least get that's a laugh. Fine. Yeah, I got tired of it. I mean, it's, yeah. it, it, yeah, they're it, bad. It, introductions are, or prayers. Mm-hmm. When yeah. somebody, okay, right. we're going to pray, and then Tim's going to come up. Well, they'll pray and yeah. then walk off. Well, back in the day, some <laughs> of the preachers wanted to have like their, um, special singers yeah and do, do a little do a special you want to do a little devotion oh, before man. the show it's like yeah. no i'm gonna sing a special tonight the lord gave me this song exactly yeah, it's yep. special yeah, and that was exactly. that was very special some of these songs were not that special that's right but well, they're like i got an audience well this if they're big, if they're just it. giving you a check if they're just paying you money yeah they, they yeah, can do they whatever, can do whatever, whatever they, they want, want. Yeah, yeah for sure when it's a ticketed show you're like nope yeah i do a bit i think you have a bit similar to this about like when somebody says the lord gave me this song oh yeah like we spoke with the lord <laughs> and he wants you to back. knock it off. He so, wants you to give it back. Uh, Lord, nothing to do with that. The, the Lord gave me a word for you, and that word is stop. You, <laughs> <laughs> you used to say way back then, you go, why don't you give it back? Right. Like I think whisper. you would say, would you hide it under a bushel? Did you ever say hide that? Hide it under a bushel, would you, would yes. Hide it under a bushel, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I, knew, I know when we were talking earlier, you're going to ask Johnny about something that he did. Oh, sure. Yes. Uh, speaking of America's Got Talent. Yeah. Uh, now, <laughs> you, how did, just tell us a story, how that came about. All right. So I've not really even talked about this on my podcast, but I'm happy to share with your uh, awesome. huge swath of listeners. But yeah, <laughs> so like, it's kind of a womp womp story, but it's it was a really cool experience. The producers reached out. Um, we found the right button. Yeah. You the knew produ- which one to hit. The I producers think, reached out to me, and uh, I guess they have these people now that just go out and look Teams for people who people, have videos yeah. and stuff. And they were like, okay. And then I I was, I followed up with them. I was like, is this real? It was. And then they were texting back and forth. And then there's like nothing for three months. And I was like, all right, well, they're filming now. So I guess the auditions are coming up. So I didn't, whatever. And then they just called me. I was in, uh, I think I was in California, and they were like, uh, Hey, no, I was in California. I, they, I was in like Iowa and they go, Hey, can you get to LA by the 4th of April? 
This was like April 2nd. <laughs> wow. I go, what? They go, That's yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, like I, like, I would have to fly out. They go, yeah, just book it. And well, our people, I go, what? And so they did this long interview with me over the phone. And then I was like, this can't be. So I was like, what are they doing? They bought my, and so I go out and it was just crazy. But I was like, surely this is me. If they do all this and spend the money, I'm going to be in front of the celebrity judges, right. surely. But so I was kind of preparing what I was going to do. And it's wild, Tim. They, they put you in a room and it's like backstage. They've just kind of cobbled off this warehouse into rooms. And so it's, you're just back there and it's 60 degrees. They keep it cold. And they said, cause I kept saying, can you turn, is there any, they go, no, we can't. They said they want everybody to stay alert because people will fall asleep on camera. Right. Cause they're all, you're always in the background of somebody else's shot. Oh wow. You know? Wow. So they want you so to there's be cameras like, everywhere. There's cameras everywhere. Thing. Right. And they're filming somebody's testimonial. And then you're in the back. They go, could you move your chair over? Cause they want you to be filling space or mm -hmm. whatever. So it was interesting, interesting watching their process of how they make it look like a TV show. But I kept thinking, like, what is my story? What am I going to... And I talked a little... I talked about my life, talked about my history and ministry and all that stuff. Yeah. I used to be a preacher at a church, blah, blah, blah. They, they kept trying to take it to direction. I was like, all right, well, I don't have, like, a tumor. I don't have a... I don't have any, right. like... What I am could I, have a tumor. I, what do I need to do <laughs> to get How a tumor? How many tumors do I need for Johnny, Simon's can you come in two days and can you get story. a tumor? Can you... I start smoking. I'm just like, get what a do cat I got to do? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> become a chain smoker. I'm a fentanyl user. I just started. <laughs> I'm drinking mercury. Is this working? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and breaking open thermometers and drizzling them into my... But I just knew, like, all right, well, hopefully my jokes will be whatever. And so... I was, I knew, I didn't know what to expect. You know, the, so all the weird, like backstage inside baseball stuff of their show, like you're not supposed to talk about, but now that the show's aired and everything, like my show did not make it to air. Like I, my set did not make it to air, but I was like, all right. So I guess I can talk about it now, but it was so wild. And the Terry Crews moment, like when you're backstage and Terry's talking to you yeah. right before you go on, I thought, well, that's all faked. Like yeah. he's doing that 10 minutes before and then you fake your sure. walk on and he's on, he's standing in the, that's all real. Like he talked to me and then I went on and like, he's the coolest dude. He seems like it. Yeah. He was, he's, he's so like sweet. He is brimming with positive energy. Yeah. yeah. He's unbelievable. And I was like, and I had a cool interaction with him. I was like, that's going to be on TV. Like he was just, I just knew it. Yeah. Cause he goes, he asked the guy goes, he'll ask you this, this and this, and then he'll ask this. And it was like, where are you, where are you from? What are you going to do? And then he might ask this question of you. Cause from your interview, we, I, there was a question about like, where do you, who do you try your material out on? And I go, okay, I'll do that. So where are you from Nashville? What are you going to do? I said, I'm going to do jokes. And I had my guitar and he goes, you're going to do jokes with a guitar. I go, yeah, some jokes need musical accompaniment. He goes, all right, this will be good. And he goes, who do you try your jokes out on? And I go, uh, my wife. And he goes, how's that go? And I go, well, if she hates it, I know it's going to work on stage. <laughs> and he, and he goes, my wife's the same way. He grabbed me and shook me. He goes, my oh. wife. And I go, this is television. This yeah. is going to be TV. So then I go out and I had my interaction with the judges. They were all so cool. And now, no, who were the judges? It was yeah. uh, Howie and Sophia Vergara, Heidi okay. Klum, and Simon. Okay. Oh, fine. So, and I'm just, and I'm, I'm nearsighted. So I didn't have my glasses. And so it helped me not be nervous because they're like 50 feet away. And they're, right. and they're just like blur, blur, blurry, really? attractive people. Blurry, attractive oh, yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Wait a and second. I'm, is that good. the way your shows are every night then? Yeah, I don't see You the, don't see the audience? No, I don't. I see like, I get I can see the front row. I've got but a contact lens you can put I in don't, one eye. No, you don't want. That? I, I listen to the crowd. I don't watch. So if you actually saw their faces, if I saw their faces, out. yeah, I would freak out. Be, <laughs> I take an, I, take, I take like an overview of the crowd. I, how good. long has I it like been? That. Has it been like that forever? Years, years. Really? Yeah. I'm just yeah. You never told me that. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Forever in the car with me, and I don't have my glasses on. We're gonna miss some exits. <laughs> 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 is that our exit? It is. And I just jerked the car. But so, yeah, so they were really, but the, my interaction with them is all like unscripted and you're just like, it's improv. You're just kind of like, yeah, we don't want you to be robotic. So don't tell us what you're And So they start asking you and they were like, so what did you do before comedy? And I said, well, I was actually on staff at a church. I was a preacher. And then Simon, and I said, so the crowd, I didn't know it was in LA, but it's a bunch of tourists. So they clapped. They were like, uh, and right. I thought, huh? I go, okay, a few people going to heaven. And that got oh, a laugh. That's good. And then oh, I go, good. and then they, I, that got a laugh. And I go, sorry, Simon. And really? then that got a laugh. It got kind of a, oh, right, right. like I'm razzing. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I was kind of like off to that's the races. Good. And then how he was like, well, we see you're funny. Like, what are you going to do? And so I said, I'll do some jokes. And so he goes, okay. So I go back to the mic and I did the joke medley. I did yeah. one liners. And I had to get all my jokes approved. Yeah. They all have to go up the chain of network. Interesting. So like there was a couple that were like, we don't know if you can say redneck because I did redneck game show. 
uh, if I was, uh, that's crazy. I want to host a game show where redneck yeah. contestants answer trivia questions for cash and prizes, and wrong answers cost them their hair. It's called mullet over. And so <laughs> they were like, over. "We don't know that's if you can cute. say redneck." We're trying to get it approved, and then somebody that was a, a producer goes, "Have you seen the clip? He's from the south, right? He can say redneck." Right. They're like, "Oh, okay." Right. So they were because they're always afraid of offending a certain people group. Right. 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 <laughs> and then the one that I really wanted to do that I wasn't sure was the. Conjoined twin. Conjoined twins. My dad was a conjoined oh, twin. Yeah, 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 we used yeah. to refer to you gotta, his brothers. Okay, you got to tell That's the joke. It's the best. So my it's dad, one of the like, best jokes so I've my ever dad heard. was a conjoined twin. That's what uh, did, so right? we used to refer to his brother as my uncle on my father's side, and uh, <laughs> they were surgically separated. Now he's my uncle once removed. So it's got all these beats and stops in it, and I was like, "Is it gonna land in this theater?" You know, but I didn't think they were gonna let me do it because I was like, "What if there's like a conjoined twin, whatever?" Oh you know. <laughs> Somebody's going to get Somewhere. an email, you know, and they're, they're no guys, he was Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> right. They're afraid of that stuff. That's okay. And so, yeah. It's so, but they like last minute, like an hour before I went on, they go, we got all your jokes approved. So I go, great. So you get to do whatever you want. So I was like, all right, I'm locked in. And I was just trying to remember them all. And, and I went out and did, so I did the interview and then did the thing. And my set went great. Like all the beats, just like a church show. It was like Perfect. amazing. Perfect. All the beats were there. And then at the end, like, the judge, like everybody but Simon stood up the, of the judges and the whole crowd stood up. Right. And I was like, wow. oh, wow. And Simon was clapping. And then they did the, the audience sits back down and then they have to do the critique. The critiques were great. Howie was like five minutes, just amazing critique. He loved right. it. He's like, That's oh, it's nice so great. How long have you been doing it? It really shows, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I was like, this is television. This is going to be on TV. And you're just kind of like, what? And then they, I was the last one of the night, by the way. It's a four-hour taping. Four, four hours. hours. So this crowd had been there four hours, and so I and so I, I was worried about that. Do they break it up at all? They do. They they do like a little bit of of like, and you nobody can have their cell phone out, but like they'll take these breaks, and then you can take your cell phone out, but yeah. then you have to put it away. So my buddy John was in the crowd, so I was like, thank God you were here, because like nobody's gonna ever know this happened because I didn't make the air, even though I got right. a standing ovation. But like he goes, it happened. It was great. Yeah, you did great. But it was just so interesting. He goes. I couldn't like text you, but he goes, people were getting four yeses on your show. Like eight of the 10 people got four yeses. And he goes, I was so worried. Like Johnny's going to be the sacrificial lamb, this tired crowd. They're going right. to have to gong somebody. Right? Oh, right. right. And he goes, then once one person got, got gonged or whatever, base got X'd, buzzed. And then he goes, then it was like five people in a row got you four yeses. And he was mm. like, this is going to be so. And he goes, right before you came out, this crazy hippie couple came out and were like singing karaoke. And it was obviously like a stunt casting. Right, right. Of like, they were sent there to bomb. Okay. And they did. So And that's they good. got buzzed. So and John good. was like, okay. Like a palate cleanser. Reset. Right. Yeah. And so now I have, a ch I have a chance. It's like reset to yeah. ground level. Yeah. So it was like a really trippy thing. And so. Yeah, and then so then they do the critique, and I was the last thing of the night. So at the end of the night, they just go, as I'm getting right, they go, Johnny W. They said my name again. The crowd stood up again. Wow. Just from hearing my name. That's awesome. And I was like, there's no way. this. And so then we walk, and then lawyers grab you, and they go, okay, you got four yeses. This is what this means. You go into a pile of <laughs> yes people. Right. And then they all fight over you mm -hmm. from now till when the shows start to air in August. Right. This was April. So I'm like, you should know something by June, but we'll blah, blah, blah. Okay. You don't talk about it. Don't whatever. You sign these in deals. Okay. So I told like a couple people, but it's like swore them to secrecy. You were one of the, I texted you the yeah, night of, I yeah. was like, Tim, this is happening. Uh, I was just, I was, I was calling you the day of to ask you like, what material should I do? Right. Cause I thought, yeah, you were saying, Tim, cause we have such similar like yeah. styles of comedy. I was like, Tim would, if you had this opportunity, what would you be your 90 seconds or two minutes? Like yeah. what would you do? So you were really cool. And you were like, just do you do your thing. But I was like, okay, lawyers are talking. It's going to be whatever. And so then I spent like three months in the dark of like not knowing. Wow. And so, annoying. and everybody's asking me that I had told her right. like, is it gonna, and they're all excited for you. And I was right. like, I never should have told that many, but I was just like excited. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then it gets down to it and you're like, now it's like two shows left. And I'm like, well, and then they aired like a B roll shot of me backstage talking or something. Yeah. And so people started texting me. They were like, you're on. And I was like, no way. And I look and I'm on, but it's not my set. Right. So then I was like, maybe they're going to, and I asked the producer and he goes, no, they're not going to air your set probably, but I'm not hundred percent sure, but probably not. And then sure enough, the shows are all, they're in the finals now. So, yeah. but it was just that thing of like, this wow. is the reality so, team. You have no control. Yeah. But they why? just picked, well, I'm in, you know, they had another middle-aged white guy and they, you know, mm -hmm. they want to, 
They're they want, probably looking for story. They they're want just, a story. They want to, okay, we got a guy. There was another guy that did like, uh, he had a bit, he had a piano and he did a bit about like church, white church and black church. Mm-hmm. So maybe they were like, okay, we got a church guy. Because my story uh, was like from, I didn't do churchy comedy, but I did, a, my backstory was church related. Yeah. So maybe they thought, all right, we checked that box. Who knows what the reasons are? Yeah. yeah. I just made peace with it because I thought, well, I did well. At least it's not like I'm waiting for the bomb to drop of like, I bombed and now are they going to air it? Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a weird feeling. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, Are they yeah. going to make me the like laughing stock yeah. thing? Right, right. So I knew that like I had done well and now it's just, are they going to air it? And when they didn't, it was disappointing, but I have peace about it. Because I was like, you know what? I did my, I did everything I could do. Right. Well, we're proud of you. And man. it was a cool experience. That's awesome. yeah, yeah, that's so great. That's I mean, awesome. I made Sofia Vergara laugh. That's not yeah, bad. Yeah, that's so fun. That's something. And I she, love that. She's She fine. doesn't even speak she's English. Hilarious. She, she's, yeah. she's hilarious. She's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> she is. She really she's, is fun. I think she's getting a divorce. Oh, no. Oh. Believe it or not. Do you think that's it's so because sad. of something that I... Probably. She's, oh, man. I know. Sophia, I'm taken. <laughs> I know. You can't. Curry would not be happy. Well, no. look at you. Right? 90, 94 yeah, pounds, is it? Yeah, I'm down to 94. Need to supercharge your hiring? You need a super hiring partner. You need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites searching for candidates with the right skills, Indeed's a powerful hiring platform that can help you do it all. They streamline hiring with powerful tools that find you matched candidates. With Instant Match, over 80% of employers get quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they sponsor a job, according to Indeed Data US. Finding great talent doesn't have to be a second job. You can hire faster and better with Indeed. With Indeed's matching platform, you'll find who you need. Join more than 3 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. So, start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash Hawkins. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash Hawkins. Just go to Indeed.com slash Hawkins and support the show by saying you heard about it on this podcast. Indeed.com slash Hawkins. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. Indeed. (laughs) Do you think, because we've had our friend Mike Goodwin was aired. Uh Uh-huh. And I, you know, it's obviously helped him out in his career. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, what do you think? Was he on America's Got Talent? Which one was he on? I don't know. He was on the same one, I believe. Okay. I don't know. And I've asked him about it too, like, because he was already doing well. And I was like, how much do you think AGT was like, well, I don't know. He goes, it's weird too with those shows because they're, you're fighting now over like 3 million people, like a show on network television with so many channels. Yeah. It used to be like, if you go on the tonight show and you had Johnny Carson say you're, he gives you the okay. Right. He was a career man. You're a made man. Yeah. Now it's like late now with Jimmy Fallon, if you're on there, it's like, oh, I can book the chuckle hut four weeks <laughs> yeah. more a year. It does not yeah. carry the same because it's three million people that watch those shows. They might right. see clips or whatever. It used to be like thirty five million people might see you. Mm-hmm. So I don't really know what the audience. So is how many? For that I mean, show. how many people do you think that are succeed on that show? And then really translated keep, into keep it going though because you've got would, like Terry Fader has yeah. just had a Terry phenomenal. Fader. We had Taylor Susan, Williamson. What's her name? Um, uh, Susan that's Boyle. Susan Boyle. Susan Boyle. Yeah, yeah. But like comics, you had Taylor Williamson, She's who was amazing. like he had this kind of nerdy uh, thing that he played, and he would flirt with Heidi, and right. that was his whole thing. And he still goes back. Like they still have him back on because he has this whole energy, right? And he's kind of like he was the, a contestant. Yeah, okay, he, he got so second. He lost to a dog act. Oh my! Gosh. A Japanese dog act wow. won America's Got Talent over him. Wow. So a comedian's never won the show. Oh, wow. Terry okay. Fader got second. Taylor Williamson got second. Uh, right. But, you know, but they've had good careers. But it's weird to think. It's like what I think it does. It's like American Idol. It gives you a window of, like, heat. But you have right. to still, like, keep creating. Right. And, uh, but I'm happy with my career. I well, really you love well, what okay. I do. Okay, well, sure. you've, I mean, sure. you've done, well, the dry bar. Yeah, I've done you've two done dry that. bars. Now, how has that? Oh, those have been I, amazing. That, like, I mean, I looked at Kington's dry bar. He's got like a million, a that. million views on dry bar. They're so fun. It's like I don't know. I don't know if I've ever been asked. Oh, they didn't it's, ask you. Okay, it's so cool. Like, um, they have seven million subscribers. 
Yeah. It's like Netflix and then them probably as far yeah. as like eyeballs. And they're just this little company in Provo. So mm -hmm. I think if you're talking about impact, I do I do so many shows now where I go, we saw your dry bar, we saw your whatever. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. I remember Bone saying that. Bone did AGT and had like one set where he made it on air and then his next set they kind of buzzed him or whatever. And he didn't really. really what and probably editing. Because he goes, yeah. So when right. he has to go back? You went back and then it's like, oh, here's another set and he just didn't do as well. Okay. And who knows if that's like edited or they, they took a crowd from another thing. It's like, let's yeah. make Bone fail here so he because we're ready to move on from him. That's scary. That's yeah, scary. Yeah, they have me. control. Yeah, Plus, you know, it's especially when you're talking about different material, different words you can't say. I yeah. mean, our friend Anita did a did a pilot for a sitcom, uh -huh. which is like to get that far to actually have it's a huge. pilot done in Hollywood. And uh, by the time they got, you know, Branyan wrote for her. Yeah, they had to keep And he did so like a joke things. about an Oreo, uh -huh. saying Oreo uh, or, or whatever and they're like you the can't law say lawyers. you can't say Oreo. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, the lawyers have to dissect everything. It's very Well, that's what I was afraid of, too. Like, the brands is like, I have a joke about McRibs. I have a joke that kills, mm -hmm. you know? And I was like, if I can't do the McRib joke on the air, like, that's my dream is to do that on national television. Yeah. And right. McDonald's is probably going to be a sponsor of this show. Yeah. They're going to kill that joke. And, or worse, what would happen is they get it approved. Yeah, let's try it. And then I close my set on that joke. McDonald's kills it last minute, and my set gets struck. Yeah. Right. They just strike the whole thing yeah, because yeah. of last minute yeah. corporate. They're afraid of a lawsuit. So, or afraid of a sponsor pulling. But I will say about Bone, he made it on air and had like one good set, one painted him not so good. But he was on the air. He, he got national television and he had a good set. He said the dry bar was like 10 to one as far as like the heat. Really? As far when as like did he do actual it? book, translating the actual book. Bookings, yeah. Wow. So it is what it is. I mean, when did he do dry, this was, the dry bar? He did his dry bar like five years ago, probably. Okay. And I think, AGT would have been around that same time. Okay. I think the difference is, is when you're on a show like America's Got Talent, yeah. the people, it's more of that just straight celebrity. People know who you are. They mm -hmm. might not be a fan. Whereas dry bar is more of that kind of more of a, yeah. uh, people are more likely to follow you. I was talking to uh, my friend Dan Culp about it today. You know Dan Culp. But anyway, he was like, asked me how and I told him about AGT, told him the story. Because he was like really rooting for me. And I'd tell him, ah, oh, it's whatever. It, it didn't happen, but whatever. And he was like, yeah. And then we were just talking about like how, like, it's okay. You have no control. There's no, you don't get to decide. Yeah. And what I was, I compared it to like AGT, putting AGT, because some people put AGT on there. And I could put AGT on my poster if I wanted to. Yeah. I was on AGT. Yeah. Like yeah. even like they aired the B-roll and I, my set, I killed whatever whatever i could do that and he goes yeah but that's kind of what do you think about that and i go i don't know i said here's the thing about people that do that it doesn't bother me because what you're trying to do it's almost like tiger woods like heather might watch a golf tournament when tiger woods was at his peak it draws in like casual fans yeah mm -hmm. like michael jordan would make casual fans of basketball watch basketball right. and when he retired the nba went down not because the basketball wasn't good anymore. It's because those casual fans just kind of dropped off the yeah, map. Yeah, right. true. So I think an AGT just makes somebody who goes perk up and go, oh, I've heard of that. Yeah. And then you have a fighting chance if your jokes are good on top of that. But it gets you like in the door. Yeah. I think I think you have to be a lot more extreme. Like the guy who, uh, the comedian who wore the, the dragon outfit. Yeah. Oh that my guy gosh. who's very oh, yeah. funny. Piff the magic dragon. Piff the magic dragon. Right. So I think that's a little bit more, probably has more sticking power. Yeah, why didn't right? you do that? Should have done that. I should have <laughs> worn I didn't some even kind think of outfit. about it. Like a crab, like a crab outfit. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, lobster. <laughs> Man, crab with a guitar. Yeah, I think I think that would work. How does he? How does he play that thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you? I mean, I because I've I, we both we both have guitars, and I know you've probably because you, like you take it to Zanies. Do you use the yeah. guitar in Zanies uh -huh. and stuff? Do you ever get that vibe from other comics? Like, oh, he's got a guitar. Sure, he's got a guitar. He's not a comic. Oh, sure. People he's a used hack. To say that. Oh yeah. In Christian comedy conferences. Oh, absolutely. Oh, Some yeah. of those guys, and this I'm thinking, a, are we or jealous whatever. or what are we doing here? It's it's a what they call it. It's a uh, a gimmick. Yeah. It's like what's yeah. not a gimmick. Mm -hmm. Everything yeah. is a gimmick. Yeah, it's, totally. it's just a tool that you use. Like when somebody does yeah. a, a manic, when a, like Doug Stanhope or somebody, and they just just do a rant. Uh huh. That's yeah. a gimmick. That's a gimmick too. Because yeah. people are laughing a lot at the at the energy. Yeah. Of of the what pacing you're doing. of it. The who used call, to joke, callbacks and all that stuff. They're all gimmicks. Who used to joke on the bus and backstage like, "Oh, I'm Tim Hawkins. I fall on the ground. <laughs> I run around." It was my own children. It, they, I know they do. <laughs> that. It hurt me very but deeply. Some a comedian was was it Brandon or I mean they were. Doing it in, in a fun way. Yeah. 
They yeah. were doing it like Oh, totally. But so, yeah, some, there wasn't there a clip said, from a uh, like rock that. show where they were talking makes about up. animal noises like yeah, he just we makes can't all just do animal, animal noises. noises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we can do some animal noises. And Tim was like, I read an email the other day that my pig noises saved their marriage or whatever you did the whole thing. My barnyard animals <laughs> saved their, save save their son from drug addiction. <laughs> <laughs> Did you meet any uh, other comedians in LA at at uh, yeah, uh, yeah oh I didn't yeah meet, that's a good question. I would, there was somebody in the green room with me that went on. They were from New York. They had been doing it like I think they said forty years. Wow! Uh, wow. She's a corporate comic now. <clears throat> she's the fastest talking woman. Uh, what was her name? That's Fran, her Fran Fran Capo was her name. And she went on, and I didn't see what was going on. I was like, oh, man, she's going to kill. They had a bunch of backstage of her because she's fast-talking, and they thought, this is great B-roll. Yeah. She's fast-talking, and like all the people are looking at her like this, and she's doing it on purpose. And But she was going to do stand-up, and she went out, and I was watching her on the monitor like, oh, she's killing. Because the judges were like, and they're like laughing. And then they kept going, and I'm just watching it. They're on headphones, like the, the backstage crew. So I'm not hearing it. I'm just watching. I'm like, she's crushing. And then it kept going, and I was like, oh. And they go, yeah, she's just now starting into her set. That was just her interview. And I go, oh, okay. And then the set I could tell wasn't going as well. Oh, it was yeah. like she's a, I guess she's older material or whatever. Yeah. And they just thought it was kind of just okay. Kind of corny. And that what what they kind of said to her was, you were so funny in your interview compared to your oh, wow. jokes. So it was kind of like she was really, I think she was really bothered. And oh. showed, I didn't even get to yeah. say goodbye to her. I think she just kind of like, and oh. I felt bad because I was like, ah. Oh. And then I went on and killed and I was like, well. See you at the finals. <laughs> and of course, I didn't make it to air either, even though I killed. So, like, oh it, was, it shows you have no, and probably, you know what's funny? They probably aired her uh, backstage stuff. She, <clears throat> it was so, she was so compelling right. backstage. Interesting. She was the fast talker, and she was really, really she just so funny. She just didn't realize that she was funny as her natural well, and self. Well, you know what's this, funny? She is really, this her? Yeah, yeah. she really oh. is funny. She really is funny, but, but I just think they thought. This is just her talking fast. I yeah, don't okay. Know. Oh, yeah, let's let's watch some let's fast hear. talking. Yeah. You buffed it, you buffed it, you got somebody to clean on the chimney pits, had a butt boiling the wood, and hopefully we'll see tomorrow warm peace. I did not. I happen to be the Guinness Book of World Records fastest talking female. When I broke the record originally on the Larry King live show. You're told the secret place, most high shall abide on the shadow of the man who will say, my lord, to revenge the fortune of God and him, my trust. You're told the secret place. Stop. You have set the Guinness Book of World Records. Clocked at 603.32 words a minute. I could do that. She was just kind of. She's doing the three little pigs. Yeah, uh, I, I couldn't know. tell though. Well, yeah, I mean, again, I'm, Fran was so sweet, and uh, I definitely I don't want to be telling tales out of school here, but she was so sweet, and I felt <laughs> I felt bad for her because I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here she had this great thing, and backstage she was so cool, and then I thought, oh, she's killing, and then she didn't have, I guess she didn't have a set that the judges liked, or they didn't thought, well, we mm. can't use you, and then I didn't get, even get to say goodbye to her. I texted her the next day. I was like, hey, and she's like, hey, you know, showbiz, <laughs> whatever. Hey, and then. Hey. And right. then I thought, oh man, I had a, I felt bad because I was like, I had a great set. And then, yeah, she talked, she texted really slow. I was going to say, did she text slow? <laughs> the bubbles just go on. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. She kind of hits the wall after she goes up on stage. Yeah. <laughs> She hunts and pecks. Good night. Yeah. But yeah, what an yeah, what an amazing experience. Yeah, yeah and it was just so cool, cool to be like, you know, that they came and like reached out and. You know, at least I didn't like go wait in a cattle call line and spend yeah. a bunch of money to go to L.A. I yeah, they came and right. got me, and it was fun. Oh, nice. and yeah, I got that's to, fun. And my best buddy got to go with me, and we, you know. Well, couldn't you have made up a story now? If you looking back, what story would you, you make? You know up? what? Oh yeah, I, I think I would do it differently now. I think I held back. Like I didn't, I didn't talk about weight loss at all because I didn't want them to make me the weight loss guy. Yeah. And but I didn't talk could... about like my parents are both dead, and I didn't want to be the dead parents guy. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, right. you're afraid of it. I was like, they're going to make me the dead Coming parents. to the stage. <laughs> His parents are dead, you guys. <laughs> Your parents might be dead if you... <laughs> it's like you might be a redneck. you go to a funeral every six months when you're 14, your parents might be dead. <laughs> if you take flowers to your parents' gravestones every month, your parents might be dead. <laughs> Oh my God. But if you okay, so what if you could make up one? No, that's the thing. Uh, and you know and what's then, funny when I read. So here's this true story. So when Todd, your brother Todd, started managing me, right early right. in like 2013 yeah. or whatever, I'm going out, and somebody, some agency reached out. Hey, America's Got Talent. This is like season five or whatever. We can get you a front of the line pass. Yeah. And I and I Todd was kind of like helping with my career, and so I reached, I go Todd, do you think I should do this? He goes, Well. What do they, what's the contract look like? He goes, just so you know, they reach out to Tim every year and we never do it. And here's why. And he told me like the strategy of it, of mm -hmm. like, if you're doing a bit that kills in every city, 
If Tim does yoga pants in front of Simon Cowell and it gets a thumbs down, now yeah. that's the clip of yoga pants. It doesn't yeah. matter that it kills in every city. Yeah. Right. So that risk is not worth the reward to us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Plus, like the prize is a million dollars, but it's paid out in like 40 years of 20. You know that, right? It's yeah. paid out $25,000 a year for 40 years or something like that. Oh, okay. I didn't know and that. And if you ask for it in a lump sum, though. it's like a hundred grand or something. You get a lump right. sum before taxes. So wow. it's like, all right, I'm yeah. already doing better than that. Let's yeah. not. Yeah. So I don't want the character. So Todd kind of, I like saying it out loud to Todd to kind of talk to me out of doing it. But it's like that thing of, yeah, you, you, you go, well, oh, and then I read the contract. And part of the contract then, I didn't see it. I've not, I didn't look at it this time because I was like, whatever. I'm, right. I'd made peace with like, I want to get my one-liners on TV. Right. Yeah. Whatever they do to me. Right. But back then, uh, I read like, you know, page 21 of the contract. And it basically said they can make up a story for you. Oh. Really? Wow. So if they decide you have cancer, guess I what? I kind of not surprised. And wow. I was like, that scared the crap out of me. I was like, are you serious? Wow. And I don't know if they've ever done it, but I was like, they could really just be yeah. like, no, you know what? Your dad's alive, but you have a second dad. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, you know, who knows what they're going to do? No, I got it. Wow. I think here's what you should have done. You should have done the fake goiter. Yeah. Just have a big just a, Oh, goiter. but then... But right? I don't know. But you think you're in the people would be distracted by the you're goiter. In the makeup chair. No, no. no. It would be funny. The Put the mouth on the goiter yeah, and you like, like, a, yeah. like a ventriloquist like a goiter. Oh, my <laughs> this gosh. Is my goiter this is my friend. That's scary. I actually had, listen, I actually had a bit that I was going to do, like when I started doing churches, and it was going to be a ventriloquist with a goiter. And it was going to, and it was, he, you know what it was? It was his spiritual growth. It was, it was his. <laughs> It was the uh, so dumb. It was oh, a spiritual growth, and uh, <laughs> and then he the goiter had like uh, I would I would ask him questions like what do you what do you do all day I play with my friends what do you play skin tag that skin was tag. the joke that they <laughs> right. that was his, all that <laughs> all that to get to skin tag and then before the show where's my goiter it's like you got it you're the goiter guy you got to come around right. right. you got to have the goiter yes yeah well I I, I love that Gosh. that story too because the closest I ever came to really pursuing something like that is that they were doing school of rock on Broadway yeah. Oh, and yeah. they reached out to me to come try out for the lead part. I remember of hearing school that story and I was like, oh and I was gosh. like, uh, yeah, you should have made that work. Andrew though. Lloyd Webber. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's go. So we were going through the steps and all that. And I was, I mean, how many shows did you already have canceled? Would you have to have canceled? Like you that's, already had 50 shows on the books, right? That's the thing. It's yeah. like, we already had kind of a schedule. So we're like, well, can you work yeah. on a schedule? And they're like, not used to working around your schedule. Yeah, they're used know. to, they make the call. People just show up. Yeah. Right. So I was like, well, I can't. So I just kind of fell through, man. Yeah. That would have been, but fun. yeah, you're right. When I, it's funny because I just like, wanted to get the experience. Libby I and I had it all worked out. We were already looking at Airbnb. We were going to live in New York. And then we're going to go try to live in stars hollow from Gilmore girls. Oh yeah. <laughs> Literally looking for Stars we will, Hollow. We will shop every day. Right? <laughs> we had new credit cards. We were ready to go. We're like, we'll have one place near yeah. the yeah, Broadway and the other one. That's uptown, town midtown and uptown. Oh, yeah. yeah. Didn't you, didn't they approach you about a Vegas thing too? Like, oh, mm. a lot of families. We don't have any family friendly shows, yeah. Tim. You would be perfect for this. They and did? Kind of, didn't you kind of uh, like. It was just kind of. Yeah. They're kicking tall. tires, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know, like there is something cool about the idea of people coming to you, like especially like you're you're doing less shows now. Yeah. Like if you had a chance to go do a show in Branson for like a year. Yeah. Like Would when you? you're if you're 60, 70, wouldn't you think like, <laughs> well, maybe like everybody comes to me. The That'd bus is just love offering, yes. Love offering. He love still offering. wants to do love offering. Oh the, man. The Southern Gospel group. Well, I mean, oh, I thought. I'm listen, I'm ready. Him? Every time I talk about it, it's just I'm ready. I know you talked I get, about a year ago to Jackson about it again, and it's just then what? it's just time. You guys you know? didn't meet up at the beach house like you're gonna. Well, well, like, and you're there too. Like when I met you, the show is so broad, and the audience is so broad, and Love Offering kind of petered Here out. It. <laughs> it petered out because it's like Spinal Tap. It thirty percent of the audience is going to think it's brilliant. Forty percent of the audience is not going to know what's happening. Right. That's right. And you have to be able to live with that. Tension. But if it's good music, yeah, and it's a good show, you'll win it over. You win the day. Once again, how does anybody really grow a show? I think you just have to throw it. Well, out. And you get the reps like Branson. You get all these reps. I know. So it would be uh, so cool. And, and you can build the room around whatever you want to happen in the room. I know. They can build those set pieces. Yeah. Well, we've got a friend that's looking at buying a theater. Oh. Remember Shoji Tabuchi? He was going to buy his old theater, but he it's just, just died. It's, yeah, he just passed away. Shoji was the violinist, okay. the Japanese violinist but that's guy. still in the works. He was the biggest guy in Branson for years and years. Yeah. And um, so they're trying to, 
by his get that theater, but I think it's just kind of. No, it's it, still in the works. Is it? it yeah. Yeah. I but I mean, I'm just saying it's it needs a lot of work, but that would be a fun show to do. But I you would guys love, have the idea of making it like you guys are an old group from the past yeah. Yeah. who made it like super. It needs a piece that know, has like a, a documentary that shows yes, the history of you, that sets the stage, it yeah. gives context. Like a documentary. Because yeah. that's what you didn't have before with it that I think it needs. And then right. you could get a ton of like actual Christian artists, Michael W. Smith, that yes. they would they would do it. Yeah. Right. Just say how great. And it would be back in the I mean, Grant would probably do it's it. It's one of those things like it's so fertile of an idea. It I think of idea every time I think about it and we talk about it, I think of ideas like if you did it in Branson, you could make fun of the Branson show. Because every Branson show has a certain thing. You've got oh, yeah. the patriotic song, which you guys already have. We have. You have the song about mama and heaven. Check. You have that. Check. But then one thing <laughs> that we haven't talked about that you could do is the the really, really cheesy merch pitch. Like you have crazy pieces of merch mm -hmm. that make no sense, like a hat that glows and spins and all the things that they say. Mm -hmm. And the merch pitches in these Branson shows, they take 20 minutes. Oh my God. Oh, they're yeah. trying to nickel and dime you. Oh yeah. You know, or yeah. you can get this flashlight, kids. And it's, it's almost like one of those timeshare things. Yes. yes. It, You're trapped there. You feel like you're in a timeshare. Yeah. Maybe so fun to write a satirical merch pitch. And, oh, have and have each person in the love offering do the... <laughs> now, what are you doing in Branson tomorrow? This week? I'm doing a show at a it's a, at a church, oh, okay. but it's so, so funny. Like I was telling Tim, the church, the building of the church, they just have embraced the cheesiness of Branson because like it's an old castle that... I mean, I'd be like a medieval times. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. And it's like there's Sounds a drawbridge cool. and a whatever, and they just like... It's so cool. Right. What's but it this, called? Uh, really it's called... Uh, what is oh, it yeah, called? Oh yeah, put it up on the screen too. Wood, Woodland Hills, Woodland Hills Church. So they've just kept it. Like, the way look it, it is. up, and you'll see that it's got like there's like big. <clears throat> Let's see if we can and, see a picture of Woodland yeah, Hills. Yeah, check that and, out. That'd yeah. be fun. <laughs> but yeah, fun. they're just cool. And uh, so there's a guy in the pastors there, Ted Cunningham, and he does marriage events, and he's it's a date night. Do you have so, a green room? Right. We have a stable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on back. <laughs> <laughs> is this my food? It's a, it's an oat bag. It's like you know, it's a big like a turkey leg. Like the we put some skittles in an oat bag. You could just kind of put it on yourself. Make it a big turkey leg. Hey, you doing the goiter tonight? That's right, dude. Tim's doing the goiter you can't do the goiter that's tim hawkins bit oh that's see, look. yeah there Where it is. is see the picture on the far right there see Wait. that's it woodland hills oh that is so see it looks funny. like it's a putt putt oh, place or something thing, yeah. like you're gonna yeah that's brilliant and i think it was just they bought that building we're like hey let's just do it let's yeah why it. not yeah they got the turrets so now they, they need like a on. moat they're like sinners keep out and there's a moat <laughs> <laughs> piranha that would be great. <laughs> What's the magic word, Sinner? They should do that. They should definitely do that. Yeah, my mom. I've been. Uh, we were, we're, we Somebody sent me a clip of a show. They 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 were using Cletus Take the Real, and they were doing one. Oh, of the, in Branson one at of the, the Branson the shows. Silver Dollar City. Silver Dollar City. Oh, that's show. wild. My what mom is, went to a show, and this guy did like Chick Fil A or something. Yeah, she went and just said hi to him. Oh, that's my son. He's like, oh, really? Oh, wow. She kind of busted. But I don't. I don't. Oh, she was You're okay right. with it. I really okay don't care. It. Your mom said, the your mom made me laugh the hardest. It was so funny. So one night I'm doing a show with Tim. It's in St. Louis, which means Nelda and Coach are going to come. She's and like, they're going to try. To, I'm going to I'm gonna buy the tickets. I'm going to buy the tickets. I'm going to buy the yeah, tickets. Yeah, she was. I remember one time she was like, buy she's like, I'm buying a ticket, Tim. And you go, Mom, I made more tonight than your first house cost. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> you had we to got big, this. You had to big time your mom. But you so, old floozy. So like she comes out to the oh bus, gosh. you're getting ready, you're getting ready to go on to do your opener. And uh, she's, you know, it's like six, six forty eight, And like, of course it's a packed house. People are like, ah, they're all the crackling. She walks out to the bus and she walks in, she goes, Timothy. And you come out from the back and she goes, sweetie, there ain't a car in that parking lot. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get them next time, sweetie. <laughs> I laughed so hard. What a oh, funny thing to say. She's, she's very great. funny. Sweet, nobody came. I'm so, there's not a we car in that parking lot. We, sh we should have had her what was her the favorite? show with I, Johnny. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. She, she loves you oh, so much. Say what her joke was this week. And she was laughing so hard at her own dad joke. What was it? So first of all, she hates dad jokes. Yeah. She hates when yeah. Dave tells dad yeah. jokes. She likes dirty jokes. So then Dave is like. <laughs> she likes some little ribald. Yeah, she does a little bit. <laughs> and, she's like, and Dave's like. Tell your bison joke. She's like, well. That's the punchline, right? That was the punchline. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dang. So then she's all like, but she, but she tells it, and she's just cracking herself up. 
What was the joke? It was, what, what, it was simple. So what, what did the buffalo say? He dropped his kid off his kid off Right, exactly. Bison. 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 And then but he like, ruined ah, it by saying, tell, ah. tell a bison. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Coach. That's exactly how that went down. You've heard Coach's jokes, joke about what the uh, what the fish say when he ran into the wall. Mm. Damn. <laughs> and then... <laughs> And he goes, you know, like uh, like a dam, like uh, like beaver, <laughs> oh, no. No. like beaver. It doesn't need. Thanks, <laughs> sake. But next time we have you, and we'll have mom on the show. Oh, let's yeah, do it! I'm cute. telling you, it's gonna Nailed be is my favorite. But yeah. we're we're we need to go. It's it's uh it's we're about there, Johnny. All right. So uh, you're gonna be in Branson tomorrow. Branson tomorrow. Then I'm in uh, beautiful Fort Myers, Florida. Nice. Uh, I mean, I'm going to be in Fort Myers. My, 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 my agent doesn't own a globe. Fort Myers? I go from Branson to Florida. I don't get to, <laughs> I don't get to do this routing you do. <laughs> this BS. I'm then Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, Ron White says? Because my manager doesn't own a globe. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Good night. Well, check out Johnny's uh, Johnny W's special on Dry Bar. Yes. It's a two. You have two yeah, of them? Yeah, two on Dry Bar. And then I just had something I just released on YouTube that's a little 20-minute special, mini oh, special, fun. called Dead by Tuesday. Dead by oh, Tuesday. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I love and it. And he has a podcast. Yeah. And he has podcast. Talk about that. It's on all the streaming platforms. With John Driver, who goes writer wrote my yeah. book. Yes. Yeah. Diary right. of a Jack Wagon. And yeah. of course, cameo.com if you want to a video. <laughs> <laughs> the kids aren't here to poo poo it. Um, yeah. They I think Luke like and Libby will be cameo. here next week. Uh, they're so in the kids are there in Italy. The kids are in Italy, which is a very Hawkins progeny thing to say the kids are in italy they'll be back <laughs> johnny could you could you drive up and do the pod the kids are in europe sure tim the kids are in milan traipsing around <laughs> they went to turks and caicos <laughs> who knows when they'll be back those oh kids but all right good show johnny thanks buddy yeah, thanks. love you love you too all right always welcome here